good day. I have some hills to climb. I have some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days I'll weigh my bad days and I won't I just won't complain walk with me one more time will you please I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb and Lord knows I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days, I'll wear my bad days, and I won't, I just won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low, I can hardly see the road. I asked a question, Lord. Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. And although my weary eyes, they just can't see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't complain. I'd like to do that verse one more time because it's kind of special to me. You know, I was pronounced dead. I don't know whether many of you know that or not, but I'm still here by the grace of God. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. I asked the question, Lord, why, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. And although my weary eyes, they just can't see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I'll just say, thank you, Lord. And I won't. I won't complain. The Lord has been good to me. He's been so, so very good to me. More than my wife could ever be. He's been so good. He's been so good, he's been so good to me. And oh, he drives my wheel. 
sweeping eyes and turns my midnights into day. So I just say, thank you, Lord. I'll just say, thank you, Lord. And I won't, I won't complain. Jesus. 
Not for no social club or, or, or networking. We, we came here for one purpose, and that was to worship him. This is a faithful saying, word of all acceptance. Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. Pastor Bonner, in his absence, to my brethren on the, on the roster, is in the gospel to our officers, to our mothers, family members, and visiting friends. I thank God for this opportunity to stand before you today. And I won't be long because I know y'all got a lot of curing you want to get to early for tomorrow. So, so, so just spare with me for, for a minute, all right? I would like to share with you from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. And it reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And as it is written, the just shall live 
by faith. The gospel. And I would just like to use for a thought the good news. You know, we live in a time where it seems that all we hear is bad and discouraging news. Not only discouraging news, but terrible news. We've seen in the news account how that there is wars and rumors of wars all over the world. We've seen over there in Iraq how, how they are beheading people. We've seen right here in our own streets how, 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 how not only the police is mistreating us, but how we killing each other. It's an everyday thing. It's murder, rape, child molestation, robberies. Hear about people getting laid off, people losing their homes, the jobs are moving out of town. You hear about your parents sick, you sick, your spouse sick, or they just sick of you and they leaving. You hear about the bad news concerning our children. Half of them on drugs, on crack, you gotta, you, you gotta battle with them. And, and, and just don't think that 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 will happen to somebody else's family. It can happen to you and I. So, so, so we have to battle with them. And so all we hear is bad news. It is very discouraging at times. I have heard people say, well, I don't watch the news. I don't read the newspaper because all there's in there is bad news. But our text, the Apostle Paul said that he was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel. What is the gospel. If you would ask that question, you get a lot of different answers. Even from church folks, you get a lot of different answers. Some people say, well, uh, 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 the gospel is uh, good news. Oh, God, that you know of somebody that's trying to lie to you and trying to get you to believe their lie. They say, well, what I'm telling you is the gospel. You know, so we hear all different definitions of what the gospel is. And so basically, some of them will say, well, just to be honest with you, that the gospel is the good news in the Bible. Yes, there is some good news in the Bible. And the word gospel does simply mean good news. And the Bible is full of good news. There's the good news of how that the nation Israel, how that they had been in slavery down in Egypt over 430 years. And that, and that how that Pharaoh and the Egyptians had made their life so miserable that they cried out to God and that God heard their plea. And that God raised up a man by the name of Moses and sent Moses down into Egypt for him to tell Pharaoh that God said, let my people go. Y'all know the story how that Pharaoh said, I don't know this guy. I ain't letting them go. So God brought 10 plagues on the nation of Egypt. And finally with that last plague, which was the Passover, where God told them to take the blood of a lamb without spot or blemish, and that they was to put it on their doorposts 
in the lentils of their house. And God said that he was going to send a deaf angel through Egypt. But when the angel would see the blood of that lamb, he would pass over. So we know how that, how that God delivered the nation Israel out of Egypt. And how that even after they had made their departure or escape, how that Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he pursued them. Where they was backed up against the Red Sea and the mountains. And how that God told Moses to stretch out his rod and that he would see the salvation of the Lord. The Bible said that God opened up the Red Sea. He opened it up that day. All night long, the wind blew across the Red Sea. God put a cloud in between Egypt, I mean, Egypt and the children of Israel. In that morning, they went across on dry land. The Egyptians went to follow, but the Bible tells us what? That God closed the sea up on them and they all drowned in the nation Israel made it over to the other side, and then when they got over to the other side, they sung the song of deliverance. Yes, yes. Now, that was good news, but it wasn't the gospel. There's the story of how the nation of Israel, because of their disobedience, and they sin against God that how did God raise up the nation of the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, how that he used them to take them off into captivity because of their sins against God. And so while they was in captivity, there was a king, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar got the big head because God had allowed him to, to be the most powerful nation on earth at that time. So he made an a image, a golden image of himself. And he said at a certain time and a certain day that when the trumpets sound, I want everybody to bow down and worship that image. He took the people out by masses, by the masses. They was in thousands gathered in this plane. And so that when the trumpet would sound, they would worship. Also in captivity, there was three young men. Their name was Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo. They was Israelites. Though they was taken off into captivity, they had made up in their mind that they were going to worship no God but their God. Understand that these were righteous people, but they had to suffer because of the bad things of the nation around them. A lot of times, good people have to suffer the consequences of what bad people do. So they made up their mind that we were, we're not going to serve no other God. So, so the Bible tells us that when the trumpet sounded, that it was thousands of them all bowed down in unison at one time. Can you just picture in your mind where there is a, 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 a sea, a mass of people spread all over, and everybody bowed down, and then it, then it was just three of them just standing up by themselves. Don't you know sometimes, sometimes, regardless of what everybody else do, if you gotta stand, stand by yourself. Don't bow down cause everybody else doing it. Stand, stand by yourself. So they say that Nebuchadnezzar, he got word. So he said, look, I'm going to give y'all a second chance. 
I'm going to give y'all the, the, the second chance to bow down and worship me. They explained to him, Nebuchadnezzar, we can't worship nobody but God. And then Nebuchadnezzar said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If you don't bow down and worship me, I'm going to throw you in a fiery furnace. They told him, Nebuchadnezzar, you might do that, but I'll tell you what. We know that we serve and worship a God who is able, who is able to deliver us. But even if he don't, we ain't going to bow down and worship you. Bible said that Nebuchadnezzar had the furnace heat up seven times hotter than normally it is heated. And that when the men bound Shadrach, Meshach, and the Abednego and threw them in the furnace, that the men that threw them in the furnace from the heat of the furnace, they died themselves. So after a while, they being in the furnace, Nebuchadnezzar went and looked. He looked, he looked, he said, did I throw in three men? And he said, it looks, it's full. And it looks like the Son of God was in there. Even in the midst of our most dangerous and harrowing experiences, that goes to show us that God going to be with us. It's going to be with us. It might look like that all is lost, but God is with us. There was a story about Daniel. Daniel. Daniel was one of the captives that was taken to Babylon. Daniel found favor. He found favor with all the kings that came into power during a 70 year captivity in Babylon. He found favor with Nebuchadnezzar who was the king of Babylon. After Babylon was defeated by the Medes and the, and, and the Pers Persians, he found favor with King Xerxes. And so all his so-called co-workers, uh, they was jealous a day. See, because they knew the type of person that Daniel was. So they went to the king. They, they, they buttered the king up. They said, oh, great king, ain't nobody as good as you. Why don't you make a decree where that for seven days ain't no God or nobody is worshipped but you. Well, they had a plot against Daniel. They knew what kind of person Daniel was. They knew that, that Daniel was a God-fearing man. They knew that, God, that Daniel was a praying man. So they schemed the plot, say, don't let nobody pray to no other God but you. Well, Daniel heard the situation, okay? Daniel knew the situation. So what Daniel did, now a lot of us will say, well, I'll tell you what. You know, it's more than one way to skin a cat, all right? I'll tell you what. What I do, I just pray inwardly and won't nobody know it. Daniel went up into his room and opened up the windows so the whole world could see and, and got down on his knees and prayed. So they took Daniel and threw him in the lion's den. The king knew that they was plotting against him, but because he had to stand up on his word, he threw Daniel into the lion's den. All night long, the king was troubled. The king couldn't sleep. Early in the morning, he went 
to the lion's den. Daniel was there in the midst of the lion. God had delivered him for being faithful to God. They knew what type of person God Daniel was. Do people know what kind of people that we are? Could, could, could anybody convict us if it was a charge? Would they have enough evidence to convict us for being a Christian? Or, or are we just Christians here in, in this little safe environment? And, and then when we get out in the world, we just like everybody else. They, they can't tell the difference. We got to stand up for what we believe. All that was good news. But it is not the gospel. The word of God tells us how the Lord Jesus took seven loaves of bread and a few fish, and he gave thanks to the Father in heaven, and he fed the multitude of thousands. That the little that he had, that he made do to do great works with it. First of all, it says that Jesus, he gave thanks to the Father. What about us? We murmur and complain. We ain't got this, I wish I had this. But do we give thanks to God for what we have? Don't you know a lot of our forefathers our, our foreparents, our mothers, grandmothers, don't you know they had one tenth of the things that we possess today. And they gave, and they was thankful for that little bit that they had. And they what? They made it through and, and did better than what a lot of us are doing today. Because first of all, we ain't got sense enough to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the little bit. The Bible tells us how that Jesus healed the sick, how he gave sight to the blind, how that he had compassion on the brokenhearted, and how that he raised the dead of the loved ones. It was the widow, her son was dead. Jesus raised him. It was Jairus' daughter, she was dead. Jesus raised her. It was his friend, Mary and Martha, brother Lazarus, who had been dead for over four days and Jesus raised him. Jesus had compassion on his people. Just as he had compassion, God has compassion on mankind today. In the Bible, as we read the Bible, we have to understand this, that the Bible is full of good news. It's full of good news. It's full of good news how that God will deliver how that God will protect, of how God will provide, of how he will comfort and heal. Yes, all that is good news. But it ain't the gospel of Jesus Christ. For if we would take the time and really look deep into God's word, We'll see that there's some bad news in that too. We will see that there is a real problem that affect and facing all mankind. Don't matter your gender, don't matter your race, don't matter your economic standing, but it is a problem that we all are facing and that it is a deadly, deadly problem. You know, we always like to talk about the blessings of God. 
His love, His mercy, His, his wonderful, magnificent power. But you know, it is one thing that we, we stay away from, that we shy away from. They sung it the day that first song that the choir was singing, is that talking about the holiness of God. Very seldom do you hear anything about the holiness of God. How that God has a hatred for sin. We don't talk about the wrath of God. Well, you know, only to, all you got to do, all, all you got to do is just, is, 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 is just confess your sins. God, God will forgive you. He, he got to forgive you. You know, we, we up under grace. It ain't no wrath. Yes, it is some wrath. It is some wrath. See, the, righteous, the righteousness of God is revealed against all ungodliness. And that problem that faces every mankind in here is the same. For the Bible tells us that as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. Therefore death has passed upon all men because all have sinned. Y'all know the story. Y'all know the story how sin entered into the world through the progenitor of the human race was Adam. How did Adam sin in the garden? And how because of his disobedience unto God, sin entered into the mankind. And so mankind became, first of all, spiritually dead. And then after that, he had a physical death. Well, some of y'all might say, well, wait a minute, Rev, wait a minute. That don't have nothing to do with me. See, because I wasn't in the garden. I didn't eat uh, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So, so how is that affecting me? Well, you might not have sinned after the same similitude of Adam, but we all done sinned. For the Bible says we all have sinned. It don't say y'all done sinned. It says we all done sinned. It comes short of the glory of God. And the Bible also says that the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there was any that did understand and seek God. He said they all are gone aside. They all are become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. We all have sinned. And the bad news about that is this. God said, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so is the soul of the Son. Well, I'm going to change it. As the soul of the mother, too, and also the soul of the daughter. Covering everybody. And the soul that sinneth, God says, shall surely die. So death and pass upon all men. Rich, poor, let's keep living. Sooner or later, we gonna die. You know why? Because the Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment. Now, what we can do, we can have doctor's appointments. We can have all types of appointments. You know, you can, you, you can call in and change that appointment to a a, a, a different day or time. You can just not show up for your, 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 your appointment. But this is a, a divine appointment. You can run, but you can't hide. This is the appointment that we all gonna have to keep. And after that, then is the judgment. Well, 
God, God is a loving God. God just loves us. God, God ain't going to judge mankind. That stuff that y'all talking about is, 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 is hatred. God hates sin. And after we die, the appointed time, the Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die, and then after that, the judgment. It's going to be the dead, small and great. One day going to have to stand before God. And the Bible says that the books will be open. And another book, which is the book of life. And the dead will be judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their work. And whosoever name was not written in the book of life shall be cast into the lake of fire. Religion won't put your name in the book of life. Being a member of Pleasant Green won't put your name in the book of life. Being a citizen of the United States won't put your name in the book of life. More reformation. Well, I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking. I don't chew or spit. I don't, I, I don't do all those things no more. You know, I don't rip and run the street. I don't club no more. I'm a teetotaler. That won't put your name in the book of life. For you know why? How can you take something clean out of, of unclean things? For we all are sinners. Good works won't put your name in the book of life. There is nothing that we can do of ourselves. Don't you know the Bible says that all our righteousness, all the good things, the best things about us, is as filthy rags in the sight of a holy God. And so David said, Lord, please do not enter into judgment with thy servant. For Lord, in thy sight shall no man living be justified. It ain't nothing we can do to be justified before God of our own merits. But even with all this bad news, there is some real good news in the Bible. I remember when I was a kid, some of y'all OGs are up in here understand what, what I'm talking about. I ain't, I ain't talking about none of them youngsters, but y'all remember this. Sam Cook said, uh, I got a letter from my baby today. She said, she say she'll be home tomorrow. Sam Cook said, man, ain't that news. He said, man, ain't that real good news. So Sam Cook said, she coming home tomorrow. And you can hear the enthusiasm. He said, man, ain't that news. Ain't that real good news. Yes, sir. So, so now I got some good news. I got some good news. The gospel of Jesus Christ, that is the good news. And the good news is this, is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. The good news is that Jesus, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement for our peace was upon him. That is the good news. That God made him who knew no sin to be a sin offering for me and for you. 
the good news of Jesus Christ, that Jesus willingly took an old rugged cross and took and marched up on a hill called Calvary, and that he willingly laid down his life, and that he paid a sin debt, not for himself, but the good news it was for you and me. A debt that we could not pay. That as he hung there, as he hung there, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The very people that he was dying for, some of them had ran off and left him. Some of them sat down, pulled up a chair, crossed their legs to watch him die. While he was up there, the people he was dying for laughed at him. How he saved others, he can't save himself. Come on down if you be the son of God. But he hung on that cross. The good news is that he would not come down. The Bible said that when our salvation was paid in full, Jesus said, it is finished. And that he died when he got ready to die. And that they took him down and put him in a board tomb. That's all right, but here's the real good news. That after the third day, the third day, Jesus got up by the spirit of holiness that he was raised from the dead, declared to be the son of God. He said, all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. And that whosoever will, let him come. The good news is that you ain't got to clean yourself up. Jesus will clean you up. The good news is that you could have been the worst person in the world. Jesus, he can change your heart. He changed my heart. The good news is that regardless or how that people might bring up, well, what you used to be, what you was, what you did. That is true. But the word of God says, therefore now, there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. That's the good news. That's the good news. And the real good news is this, is that God loved us so. And because of this love, that is nothing, is nothing in this world can separate us from the love of God. Things present, things to come. Angels from above, demons from below. Ain't no height, ain't no depth, ain't nothing is able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Now, that's some good news. That's some good news, and, and that news is, the good part about it, it is open and available for everyone. Don't worry about your status or your class or, or your class standing or, or people looking at you or whatever. The, the good news is that God loves you. God loves you and he's the one that got a heaven or a hell to put somebody in. So our responsibility is this, is not to take that good news and keep it to ourselves. 
Go and spread the good news. Tell somebody about Jesus Christ. We run and tell everything else, so let's tell the good news. God bless you.